This is an example of how we deal with white cataracts. This is a 48-year-old gentleman who has light perception vision and white cataract of unclear etiology. He's already received a little Valium and has had 1% uh, lidocaine microbes applied to his eye. We've created a uh, small paracentesis port already at uh, the at the uh, nine o'clock position. We've created a uh, pyridomy at the six o'clock position here, and we're just staining the anterior capsule with vision blue. Uh, it's pretty much impossible to create safely a capsulotomy opening in an individual who has a white cataract. So we stain the capsule to enhance the visualization. We don't use an air bubble to um, protect the corneal endothelium. We just infuse the vision blue. Uh, we use pretty much the entire syringe. And then, then we just use 5 to 10 cc's of a balanced salt solution to flush out the vision blue from the anterior chamber. And our endpoint is just good visualization of the anterior capsule. Uh, the cornea endothelium remains very clear. And it's pretty interesting seeing the eye turn from blue to uh, more normal. We just wash away some of the mucoid uh, residue off the corneal epithelium. At this point, we can see the iris details very easily. We can see the anterior capsule very easily. And now we've made a very difficult situation very easy by using our friend Vision Blue. We then just fill the eye with OcuCoat. But prior to filling the eye, we get rid of any bubbles that may be right at the uh, tip of the syringe, and we uh, apply the OcuCoat to the corneal epithelium to enhance visualization of the um, capsule inside the eye. Then we fill the eye with the OcuCoat and then create our entry. Here this gentleman had some astigmatism at axis 90 degrees so we chose to operate at 90 degrees to reduce his astigmatism. We've already created the conjunctival pyridomy. I do use counter traction when I enter the eye, and I just use my viscoelastic syringe. Now I use a bed needle system to enter the anterior chamber. Excuse me, to the anterior, the anterior capsule, and I'm just going to expect that I'm going to see a mushroom cloud of white cortex as I puncture the capsule and it's going to I expect it's going to obscure my view of the capsule but I'm going to be able to use the viscoelastic which is attached to the cystotome here to blow and push the cortex out of the way to maintain visualization of my um, capsular axis. I tend to err on creating a very small capsular axis just in case the uh, capsule is under pressure. And if it wants to extend, as long as I keep it small, I can more likely control it. There, I've just blown out that milky plume of cortex with my OcuCoat. And because we can continue to visualize the anterior capsule due to the staining from the vision blue. We can therefore safely complete the capsular excess opening and uh, we can maintain the uh, anterior chamber very well by infusing viscoelastic as needed if the chamber shallows. The viscoelastic also blows away bubbles or cortical material which may obscure 
my ability to see the anterior capsule leaflet. I usually make my capsorexis openings about five to six millimeters in diameter. It's kind of fun using Vision Blue when we need it because it makes the impossible possible. Had we not stay in the capsule, being able to do this safely would be very difficult. Our usual cataract surgery times around eight minutes. This video has been edited somewhat. Um, cases like this will take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, as much time as we really need to complete it safely. Uh, we don't know what to expect when, you, when we enter eyes uh, that have a white cataract. We can encounter loose zonules, um, a broken capsule, and we would just want to err on the side of caution. So we use a AMO signature phacal emulsification system. Here it's attached to a, a ellipse FX handpiece, which is usually set at a phaco power of 40%. Um, when I try to make a central groove here, I realize that this white cataract is rock hard, and it's hard to make a central groove unless I push posteriorly pretty hard on this lens and not knowing how strong the zonules are, I choose to just create a very shallow groove and then use my second instrument as a chopper and I'll elect to chop this lens rather than do a divide and conquer. I'll chop it once and then I'll chop it over and over again as I rotate it. This lens on uh, as we work on it, it we find it's actually kind of a hypermature cataract where the cortex is mainly liquid-like and the nucleus is uh, almost floating in this liquid-like white cortex. The ellipse FX handpiece with the AMO system uh, works very well on dense cataracts. We boosted the power here to 90 to 100 percent power up from our usual 40 percent which is what we use for almost all of the cataracts. As a precaution I place my second instrument behind the nuclear fragments as I phaco them just to prevent in an inadvertent um, capture of the posterior capsule if it were to come forward. So here we've completed removal of the nucleus. We then edited out the uh, majority of the irrigation and aspiration of the cortical frag fragments. We use an LI61 AO monofocal lens with aspheric optics and insert it with a soft port injector into the capsular bag. It's a very nice delivery system. Pretty much in two movements, we can insert the lens into the capsular bag. I'll usually blow out my paracentesis port before doing irrigation and aspiration of the viscoelastic because I want to blow away any cortical fragments which may sequester themselves where the paracentesis, paracentesis port is located. As I remove the viscoelastic, I like to spin the lens oh, as many revolutions as I feel is necessary to 
free up any residual cortical fragments which may hide in the equator of the capsular bag. And it also helps me to get rid of any uh, residual viscoelastic in front of and behind the IOL. At the end of the case, we've got a beautifully centered lens implant, uh, which is surrounded 360 degrees by the anterior capsule leaflets. And we remove any residual cortical fragments. There's one more there that we grab. I use, a, I use the silicone tip irrigation and aspiration and then we uh, we stromal hydrate the incision. At the end of the case the lens implants beautifully centered patient did great. I mean, he was extremely happy. Thank you for your time.